Hey Optimancers, Chris here. Today is a video on a specific rule. What counts as difficult terrain? How does it interact with different terrain that is also difficult? And are those even different things? So let's say we cast Ice Storm. According to the spell, hailstones turn the storm's area of effect into difficult terrain until the end of your next turn. So we know how that works. Each five feet of movement in the storm's area it's going to require 10 feet of our character's movement to move through. But what if we cast Ice Storm in the area of, say, a plant growth spell, or on top of an area of transmuted rock? Speaking of which, transmute rock creates terrain that's difficult to move through, so calling it difficult terrain seems accurate, but is it? Let's wade through the muck. If you like the content on this channel and you'd be interested in supporting me through Patreon, you can do so. There is a link in the video description. Patrons of this channel get to see these videos early and without YouTube ads. Top level patrons can join me and play some D&D every month. Today I'd like to thank these top level patrons. Dave Peters, David Edgar, David F., David Lotz, David Manning, David W. Skibbins, Dewey Cheetahman Howe, Douglas Reynolds, Ed Iverson, and Eric Harvey. Thank you all so much for your support. Let's get started. First, let's define difficult terrain because it is defined more than once in the rules, and it's defined differently depending on which definition we read. So when we look in the player's handbook on adventuring, we find a definition for difficult terrain. Difficult terrain, the travel speeds given in the travel pace table assume relatively simple terrain, roads, open plains, or clear dungeon corridors. But adventurers often face dense forests, deep swamps, rubble-filled ruins, steep mountains, and ice-covered ground, all considered difficult terrain. You move at half speed in difficult terrain, moving one foot in difficult terrain costs two feet of speed. So you can cover only half the normal distance in a minute, an hour, or a day. But if we look at the rules in the next chapter, we see it defined a second time. Difficult terrain. Combat rarely takes place in bare rooms or in featureless plains. Boulder strewn caverns, briar choked forests, treacherous staircases. The setting of a typical fight contains difficult terrain. Each foot of movement in difficult terrain costs one extra foot. This is true even if multiple things in a space count as difficult terrain. Low furniture, rubble, undergrowth, steep stairs, snow, and shallow bogs are examples of difficult terrain. The space of another creature, whether hostile or not, also counts as difficult terrain. So at first glance, in either case, we're talking about doubling the cost of movement through the terrain. Where things get complicated though, is if other things are impacting our movement. So let's say we're talking about the plant growth spell. According to that spell, if you cast this spell using one action, choose a point within range. All normal plants in a hundred foot radius centered on that point become thick and overgrown. A creature moving through the area must spend four feet of movement for every one foot it moves. Now, how does this interact if we cast that ice storm spell in the area? Well, I think there's four ways we could read it. Number one, terrain that is difficult is difficult terrain. And since difficult terrain doesn't stack, ice storm would not impact movement in a plant growth. The second way we could read it is plant growth is not difficult terrain but if the rules say that moving through difficult terrain costs two feet of movement for each foot and plant growth says it costs four, we would just use the higher one. The third possibility is plant growth is not difficult terrain and moving through an area of plant growth costs four feet of movement for each foot and difficult terrain in chapter nine says that it costs one additional foot, so it costs five feet of movement for each foot. And then the fourth way we could read it is plant growth is not difficult terrain and moving through an area of plant growth costs four feet of movement for each foot and difficult terrain doubles that so it would cost eight feet of movement. So depending on our reading, 
Maybe they don't stack. Maybe they do stack and we just add the additional movement together. Or maybe they do stack and we do a multiplication. So the first question we need to ask is, is plant growth considered difficult terrain? Difficult terrain is defined specifically in the rules. But you know what? Then again, 5th edition uses what designers call natural language, where the players are expected to intuit how things work. Certainly, plant growth is terrain that's difficult to move through, so it is reasonable to intuit by using natural language we would consider it difficult terrain, even if the spell doesn't specifically call it that. On the other hand, not everything in 5th edition uses natural language, and according to Jeremy Crawford, this is one such instance. When asked the question, with the spell plant growth, how does that difficult terrain work with the druid's land stride ability, Jeremy Crawford said, the plant growth spell doesn't create difficult terrain, yet land stride allows a druid to be unhindered by non-magical plants. So very specifically, the plant growth spell doesn't create difficult terrain, even though it is terrain that is difficult to move through. So you might wonder, doesn't the speak with plant spell say that plant growth is difficult terrain? Because that's exactly what I thought. Here is the specific part of that spell. You can turn difficult terrain caused by plant growth, such as thickets and undergrowth, into ordinary terrain that lasts for the duration. Or you can turn ordinary terrain where plants are present into difficult terrain that lasts for the duration, causing vines and branches to hinder pursuers, for example. So when I read that, it reads, you can turn difficult terrain caused by plant growth. Plant growth is a spell. I didn't think it created difficult terrain, but according to this spell, it did create difficult terrain. Except here we do find a case of quote unquote natural language, specifically where it refers to plant growth. But we should notice that the words plant growth are not italicized, and any reference to a specific spell in the rules is italicized. So here we no longer have specific language. We have natural language. The plant growth referred to here isn't referring to the spell plant growth. And if you aren't confused yet, I don't know why. But what it comes down to is this. Plant growth does not create difficult terrain, at least difficult terrain as defined specifically and according to the lead designer. So next up, what about difficult terrain created by Ice Storm? Does it require two feet of movement for each one foot moved or plus one additional foot of movement? Well, that depends on context. According to the rules on travel, it's two feet for every one foot. According to the rules on combat, it's plus one foot of movement. So next up, what about difficult terrain created by a spell? Does it require two feet of movement for each one foot moved or plus one additional foot of movement? And why are those different? Well, they're different if they're stacked with something else. So if we have something like plant growth that requires four feet of movement to move one foot, well, if it requires two feet of movement to move one foot, then we're either multiplying those together or taking the higher one. But if it requires an additional one foot of movement, then we would go from four feet to move one square to going to five feet to move one square. According to the rules on travel, it's two feet for every one foot. According to the rules on combat, it's plus one foot of movement. So why are they different? Well, if it requires two feet of movement for each one foot moved, the way the rules work is these kinds of effects generally don't stack. So if we had one effect that requires four feet of movement for every foot moved, and we had another one that required two feet of movement for every foot moved, we would just use the higher one. But if it requires an additional one foot of movement, well, four feet of movement to move one foot plus an additional one foot of movement, that would stack and it would become five feet to move one foot. Now, in the case of ice storm, I think it's safe to say that it's going to be affecting combat movement. So it would be plus one foot of movement per foot moved. So four feet of movement for one foot moved for a non-difficult terrain plant growth plus one foot of movement 
for difficult terrain caused by ice storm, and each foot of movement through the area would cost 5 feet of a character's movement. In other words, 25 feet of movement to move one square on a battle map. But what about travel? Plant growth is permanent, so it could conceivably cover a massive area if cast enough times, as could various ways to create difficult terrain, like the Earth Tremor spell, for example. Or maybe the terrain is just naturally difficult. Well, by my reading, if we're using the combat definition of difficult terrain, then they stack. If we're using the movement definition of difficult terrain, then they don't. And it's even debatable what effect plant growth spells would have on overland non-combat movement, since these movement types are clearly not interchangeable. Now, if we're combining an effect like plant growth and transmute rock, well, the way they're worded, you would take whichever effect required greater movement, if any, and that would be the movement required. At least, that's the way I read it in this relatively muddled deep dive into the rules of 5th edition. So my main message here is actually to the designers. You are working on the next edition right now. Here is an example of something you need to make simpler. Here's a suggestion. How about difficult terrain is simply defined as an area of terrain that requires extra movement to move through? Or even better, maybe we don't even need a specific definition of difficult terrain. But when there is terrain that is difficult, it's just laid out right there what the effect is. Then every terrain that's difficult can just be called difficult terrain without confusing anybody. Those are just my thoughts. Is there something you would interpret here differently than I did? I would love to hear about it. Otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon.